Hi, welcome to Pyography Made Easy. I'm Brenda. I've had a number of people asking how Todd made the metal shields that I use. Well, in this episode, we're going to explain how to do that. We're going to go out to the shop and Todd's going to show us, but because it's kind of a noisy process, I'm just going to do voiceover for everything that he is doing. Well, let's go out to the shop. Todd uses plain aluminum sheet metal that is 0 0.019 inches thick. This is a thin, very flexible metal that is easy to work with. On October 6, 2022, you could find it on Home Depot's website for under $14. You can also find it on Amazon, and some of the listings state the thickness as 0 0.02 inches. I will put a link to both sites in the description below. For most of the shield designs, I used my airbrush and crafting stencils I've acquired over the years. I arranged them on the metal sheet and traced around them with a permanent marker. You can also make your own custom designs. I'm using one of my craft stencils to draw a design on cardstock. I'm using cardstock because it is a thicker paper. This makes it more rigid and easier to trace around. But you can also use a lightweight paper, like standard copier paper. I started a new design because all of the metal shields Todd had made me featured curves. I decided I wanted one with different sized squares and triangles. These could be used as small straight edges or to create geometric shapes. Well, at least in theory, that's my plan. After the design is drawn, then you have to cut it out. Where possible and convenient, I used a straight edge with an X-Acto knife. On rounded areas, I used scissors. Either way will work. I made a loop with tape and placed that on the paper. Then I flipped the paper over and pressed it to the metal sheet. This kept the design in place as I traced around it. For the tracing, I'm using a fine tip permanent black marker. To cut out the design, Todd is using a scroll saw equipped with a fine tooth number two jeweler's blade. Todd's package of blades is very old so this brand might not be available anymore. But you're after the jeweler's number two. These photos show you how small and fine the teeth are on the blades. Back to the cutting. In areas where he is working on an inside corner, he cuts a gentle curve, because that is easier than cutting an inside angle. An important thing to be aware of is that he is not cutting on the line. Instead, he is cutting along the outside edge close to the line. The edges of the cut metal are very sharp, so they will need to be sanded. During the sanding process, he removes that excess metal as he softens the edge. One last tip. Lightly sand the surface of the metal with 220 grit sandpaper before tracing on the design. This reduces the sheen and makes it easier to see the trace design when you are scroll sawing. The second cutting method is to use heavy duty scissors. You can use regular scissors that you would use on paper, but it will dull the blades, so I recommend using heavy duty scissors. Be careful when you are cutting because the edges of the metal are sharp. Here's the metal shield. You can see the excess metal along the edges, and one of the triangles got bent. The first thing Todd does is gently hammer down the bent triangle so that the shield lies flat. Afterwards, he used metal files along the edges of the shield to remove the excess metal. This will also soften the edge so that the shield can be handled without worrying about it cutting your flesh. Now keep in mind that the triangular points will still be sharp, so use caution around them. I want to mention that the design for this shield will be available for free on my website if you're interested in it. I will have a link to the website blog in the description below. 
You will need to file the back side of the shield to remove any burrs that form along the edge. Here's the progress he has made on the shield. On the straight edges, Todd likes to use a long file. But keep in mind, that's just his personal preference. There isn't a set way you have to do this. When working on outside curves, you can still use a flat file. For the inside curves, it is much easier to use round files. When possible, Todd matches the size of the file with the size of the curve. The last thing Todd does is sand over the front and back surfaces of the shield using 220 grit sandpaper. This removes any scuff marks and any small burrs that may be present. Here is how the shield looked after Todd was done filing and sanding it. The files used are inexpensive fine grit metal smoothing files. You can find sets of them at Harbor Freight. Home improvement stores like Home Depot carry sets. There are numerous sets online, including this set that comes with a case found on Amazon. I'll have links to the products in the description below. I like to hang my shields on the wall. So Todd drills a hole one to two inches from the edge. Then he sands over the hole to remove any burrs. All of the sanding produces a layer of silvery dust on the shield. To remove the dust, just wash with soap and water. Then let it either air dry or dry it with a towel. Once dry, it is ready to use. I'm using the Pro Stormer heat gun to darken the wood. This machine is similar to using a torch, but without a flame. I did a product review on the machine. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link to that video in the description below. Todd made me a shield that has several different sized holes. It works, but there's so much air coming out from the heat gun, it just doesn't produce crisp edges. So far, my main use of the shields is just to cover up pyography art when I'm working on the background. An example of that would be this dog portrait. A shield protects the dog from the heat gun while I'm working on the background. That's it for this video. I hope you found the information helpful. On my website, Pyography Made Easy, I have the written version of this tutorial. Well, thank you so much for watching my video and I will see you next week.